Hello and welcome back to the round two lead card coverage for the 2020 Michigan State Championships. We're here in Midland again and for round two and on the mics I have myself Zach O'Haran and with me I've got Donut. How you doing Donut? I'm doing great. Thanks again to all the sponsors who helped make this event go on. Uh, it's always great to have uh, such a good pro field out here every single year. Taking a look at our round one standings, we have Marweed, Bennett, Tetloff, and Hamilton uh, with a couple strokes or more on the rest of the field. Still really packed. It's anyone's game. Uh, hoping to get some hot scores here in round two. Starting off with Andrew Marweed, the hot round 51, 1031 rated. He's looking to keep that lead going uh, into the third round new course. And on his tail, he's got Jeff Bennett, seven-time state champion. He's going to be someone to look out for. Uh, he is hot on his heels. Third place, we've got Brendan Tetloff, lefty showing up on kind of a lefty course. He's making a return to disc golf. We're really excited to watch it. Rounding out the card, we've got Ian Hamilton. He's still two strokes above fifth, so not a commanding lead, but uh, definitely showing up to be here. Yeah, and it's absolutely great to have a kind of a righty backhand dominant player kind of give us the other perspective of how to play this course. Starting off on hole three, this is our first hole for the tournament. Uh, it is a 459-foot uh, par four. You're really trying to put something past the road with a backhand a mid range or maybe a forehand. I imagine we'll see Marweed and Bennett throw some Firebirds into that landing zone. Uh, and then you're trying to get an approach shot into the green here and try to get a tap in three uh, as usual. Get best up case first tomorrow. with a hot round of 51, Andrew Marweed. We have Marweed here uh, teeing off first. And he's really the Firebird guy at this point. Mm. He's There's quite a group of Firebird guys. I think Bennett teeing off after him is almost definitely going to throw a Firebird as well. Yeah. But Andy's he's, got like six of these in the bag right now. Yeah, he really relies on him. He's got a, a varying instability as well. This one's looking really clean, coming right over the road. Pushing and, way farther than he did yesterday. He was choked up on the road. Yesterday, so he's gonna be Second really happy to probably the convert that. Shooting a 52 on the day, Mr. Jeff Bennett. Jeff following suit here with his Firebird. Um, this tee shot is kind of a layup shot. Uh, it doesn't really feel like a a drive, and uh, there is a play for two here if you've got a monster turnover backhand. But you're really Third really crossing the your card. fingers. With a 52 on the day, Mr. Brendan Tetlock. Yeah, that, that play for two is a really big turnover right hand, I would imagine. I think the lefty is a little pinched uh, trying to throw a flip to flat that angle. It's too far. Right. It's just a really difficult shot. Brendan's trying to get a little farther down the fairway, and he's released this a little left. So he actually did there. take right gap on that one, which I like for the lefty, and then he tried to flip it up right gap to penetrate a little further, and he just turned it over a little too far. And rounding out our lead card today with a 52 of his own, Mr. Ian Hamilton! There's that darker tree in the middle of the fairway, and you really have to commit left or right of it. Uh, the forehand guys are going to commit left, and the backhand guys are going to commit to the right for the most part. We have Ian Hamilton here. He's definitely going to be throwing a rock a lot in this course. It's very wooded. He's very good at controlling that uh, turnover rock shot. These are all glow rocks or V-rocks in his bag, I'm pretty sure. And he's landed himself in a very nice place. I really enjoy watching Hamilton's game because he's not afraid of the forehand. And he has a very strong forehand, in my opinion. But given the choice of two plays, he's always going to prefer his backhand yeah. if there is a backhand line. Jeff doing a nice job there. He was a little farther back, had to kind of cut through the trees there with, on an Annie Firebird and then uh, got himself up there for a putt. And there's Hamilton throwing a forehand. Looks like uh, maybe gripped it a little longer than he'd wanted, left it a little wide. It kind of rolled his wrist. Mm -hmm. Marbied in the ideal spot here. Got an easy pig up shot here. We're going to see a lot of Firebird into pig into P2 from Marweed for the long three conversions. Absolutely. There's Brendan here uh, giving that a run. He was a little more pinched off than the camera was angle was giving him, but he's going to get that laid up there and try to get his easy three. Ian with a risky run from deep, he should be able to convert from behind that tree there. Jeff probably from just, just outside circle here. 
in Kansas. No chains needed for that one. Yeah, so Jeff actually practices putting without chains on his basket at home. He's got a pole with a bucket around it, and then it has the ring on the top, but he removed all the chains because he doesn't like spit outs. So he tries to putt into the trash can instead of banging it against the chains. I did not know that. Yeah, Very that, cool. That's what creates Jeff's kind of interesting putt, where it, it's not really nose down and it's not really floppy, but it still ends up in the bottom. You can't complain about results. Seven state championships definitely is just a, an incredible player. Headed into hole four now, 374 feet par three. This one kind of got our competitors in round one. You have to kind of cut this corner pretty quickly. Uh, this is definitely a tweener hole par wise. Uh, it's listed as a par three, but getting down there for your two look is very difficult. You have to lace this very thin line. Uh, I would imagine Brendan probably has the best route with the lefty hyzer trying to get down there. Maybe a understable released on hyzer to kind of take that route, but I, um, we'll I don't even maybe. like the run here. I don't think playing this for two is even a smart play. I think what a lot of players are going to do, what Andy seems to be doing here, is he's committing for the two line and just relying on his very, very strong scramble mm -hmm. to uh, kind of reinvent the three instead of laying up. Bennett throwing a backhand here, I'm not think, sure what his play is. I think that's a, a more aggressive, that's a really flippy uh, driver in his hand there. I think he was trying to turn that over into the fairway and try to have it give, kind of give a hold that line a little longer. Yeah, I believe that's Bennett's soft DGA disc. Absolutely. And here, Brendan's taking that line that I mentioned, uh, the Heiser. I think that's a mid out of his hand there. Uh, also throws Innova in his bag, I'm pretty sure. Um, He's 100% Innova. Yeah, I had a great time chatting with him while we were at State's. And Ian trying to cut that corner as well. Had a rock in his hand, but didn't quite get around that corner. He's going to get pinched off in that left rough. Yeah, so Ian doesn't play for three on this hole. He's trying to throw his rock soft, and he's trying to, he's trying to hit the two gap, but with a real soft disc. So when he does hit a tree, it's not hard punishing. It just kind of falls to the ground. Absolutely, and you can see here he's got an open look down the fairway now. Still tight. Jeff with an amazing scramble with that hawk getting himself up there for a putt. Similar issue to his previous forehand from Hamilton there. Just kind of rolling his wrist over a little bit. Yeah. His and disc is cutting off. These, these, these two days, while the weather looks really beautiful, the temperatures were quite cool for these guys. And so keeping their hands warm was uh, definitely difficult for these guys. Marweed was uh, not in his element weather wise. You see him with the sweatshirt on. Yeah, he is very long and skinny, and his knuckles just turn blue in 70 degree weather. <laughs> And there's that great scramble skill coming through the woods there with that pig. Gave it, oh, nearly parked it, kind of scooted past that uh, hard ground there. He's going to have a contested putt for his three, though. Big run from Ian. Nothing wrong with that. A little short, good line, though. Here's Jeff. He was in a really tough spot from his first shot, so this is a great look from C2 here. Floating this one out there. Ooh, good run from him. Marweed here, probably 20 feet, 15 feet. Marweed is so lucky to be as large as he is because that, that tree did impede his uh, stagger putt, and he just has a comfortable step out because he's just a gigantic human being. This hole actually came in as the most difficult for uh, round two, playing almost a stroke over plus .84. Um, no birdies recorded in round two. That's one of the reasons I like the layup play, is just securing your three. Not anyone is going to take a two and beat you. And no. if you just take your putter or your mid and place it in the center of the fairway and then pretend scramble up to the basket, I think that's going to be a lot easier hole. People yeah. get really hungry on this hole. Definitely a hole that can punish you. Heading into hole five, uh, the another par four here, 466 feet. This is a very wooded uh, fairway here. You're really just kind of poking and praying to get as far down the fairway as possible. The dr uh, drone here is going to be taking this right gap as you can see uh, pretty early morning here when we recorded this and uh, you're trying to find any of these gaps really. If you land up in right where the drone is at right now you've landed in an ideal position. Uh, some people were able to card a two on this hole I'm sorry, excuse me, a, yeah, a two on this hole in practice rounds. Uh, Ziggy mentioned George Bino being one of them, but uh, nothing so far in the tournament with an eagle here.
Yeah, we saw the young gun gun it with the wide backhand line yesterday and not quite convert on his probably 80-foot putt. But Andy matching him with the forehand line is just insane. Yeah, he decided to go on the right gap this time and turn his, uh, his more understable Firebird over and try to take that gap, which I think was a smart choice from him. Um, and honestly, if he missed those trees, he's probably sitting in circle's edge. Mm-hmm. And so he, like, really great shot from him. And then Bennett took the wide hyzer line yesterday. He's going for it again. If he's got to get it way up with probably a Firebird, but something really overstable. Yeah, that's his 2019 Firebird. Yeah. There. So he's trying to go a little bit further and a little bit higher than that. Yeah. And you can get around most of the gaps. And you're not playing for two there, but you're playing for the easiest three. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he's going to be... Not necessarily thrilled with his drive, but he's going to be happy with it. Yeah, definitely caught some foliage early. And Ian Hamilton, not to be outdone by Marweed, throws the backhand line and gets himself right next to uh, Marweed there. So they'll have a couple two looks from there. I think Hamilton's ideal drive there would have been maybe another 40 feet. Yeah. So, I mean, that's very close to perfect, and he's going to have a look at basket. Tetloff was a little pinched from that position. Uh, He's pitched up farther up there. He'll likely take an easy four but we'll have a three look jeff throwing the hawk here and what a shot from there he's so consistent with that specific disc i know he has hawked other discs but it's usually that one if he's throwing an overhand he is very good at it it's almost a signature shot from him at that this point uh, with the force over firebird line and then that hawk with that yellow disc i'm not sure what it is yeah Marweed from uh, the camera angle where I was at, I thought that was going in for a second, and so did Ian. Uh, but just a touch short from him, Ian with a little forehand run here. Kisses oh. off the basket. Almost got that, too. What an incredible look, too, to even be able to give yourself an opportunity that shot. Yeah, no twos carded on the in round two on this hole. It is uh, several birdies, though. Yeah, it's... A very convertible three, and you're not too happy with a four on this hole. Yeah. It's kind of a failed scramble. It yeah. plays like a longer par three instead of a. Played a almost par exactly four. as four, so a really, really difficult par three, but um, for the field, because of just how much plinko there is, it just. The averages kind of pan up to that point. Yeah, there's a lot of threes on this mm-hmm. four, so it's not hard in that sense. There's just a lot of fives. Yeah. People just hit one tree, hit another tree, and then are able to successfully scramble. We have a couple tap outs here. And really, the card doing a nice job on this hole here. I mean, it, like you said, fives can creep up on you really quickly here as Marweed now is a two-stroke lead heading into hole six, 222 feet. Maybe one of the easiest holes on the course. You really just want to throw something dead straight um, right up the gut. And if you have something that kind of finishes to the right a little bit, that's fine. But you, I don't think playing for that hyzer is necessarily the best play. And uh, just giving yourself an easy look here. I know Marby's going to be going with that signature spider pig. Yeah, you want to come in real low on the forehand line just because of the way the green sets up. Uh, you kind of jam it into the ground before the pin, and then you'll just have a little tiny bit of action. And that takes away any skips high, that skips out, stuff like that. Marby going too early there and kicking out in the fairway, and Jeff turning his Firebird over a little bit. You can see kind of his reaction there, just not what he expected from that particular shot. He was pretty well parked uh, on day one. Ian throwing a backhand pole cat that turned over just a smidge too much, caught one of those late trees on the right side. Tetloff with the easiest line to the basket with a lefty backhand. He's throwing his Nova. He throws this a lot for approaches. He really likes this disc. Yeah, it's a great disc in his hand, and that's exactly what you want to do. That's that's pretty ideal outside of being maybe you want to be five feet closer, right? I mean, that's the only complaint, but that's a, that's a great shot from him. I think all four players on this card, and on probably at least a few of the chase cards, are should be making almost every single one of their circle one putts. So getting your drive in circle one is all you need. You don't need to get any closer to the basket on a card like this. Jeff was really pinched off from that location. He had a lot of foliage on his high end, so making a a run like normal, it was not very doable, but he did a nice job getting up there. Marweed with a run from a similar distance from yesterday, but not able to convert the crew view there. He's going to have to settle for his three. And Brandon doing easy work of this hole. Yeah, not very characteristic of this hole to... Only see one birdie. Right. Uh, That's not what you thought. Surprisingly, the hole didn't play as easy as I thought, but uh, the fourth, fifth easiest hole on the day, 
Uh, only there were uh, about 15 birdies. Just looking at this course, if you did a walkthrough, you would think that this is the easiest hole, and it really should be the easiest hole. But that fairway being just a little bit too tight is almost more intimidating than it is difficult. Right. You people just got to really trust your discs. You have to over, you, people overthink it. Here's pretty much the same hole, a little bit more of a hyzer line. But, uh, I mean, you throw the exact same fairway with a little bit higher release, mm -hmm. so your disc is going to fade out a little more with the forehand line. Yeah, it's definitely going to finish a little more to the right here on hole 7, 276 feet. Uh, this is absolutely favoring the lefty and uh, forehand players here. Ian's going to be the one with the most technical approach um, of, the, of the card here. We got Brendan teeing off here. Got a mid-range in his hand. He's put that on a pretty good hyzer line. It needs to get around a couple things. And that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that went right where I was standing as the catch cam there. That's Just a, had to shuffle my feet out of the way. What a great drive. Marweed here with another Firebird. And this one's flipping a little too quickly for him. Yeah, but it stables out because it's a, it's a Firebird. And, oh, let's... Little roll, a little awkward there. It's well within his range. Hopefully, he's got an open look from there. And he was very confused as wow. to where his disc was when he came up to that one, because the way it, where it landed, you should be able to see that spot from the tee pad, and obviously his disc hyzer around that, mm -hmm. and he expected to be pretty much exactly where Jeff is. Yeah, which is the perfect shot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was... threw it with a little less power, choked up on him right at the perfect, uh, perfect spot. Jeff really showing off his practice on this course yeah one of the best prep players in the state by you know very good and I, definitely the best prep player in the state yeah. uh playing blind i don't think jeff would see quite as much success as he has where a lot of players do just thrive playing blind but i mean jeff just spends a few rounds out here and is absolutely deadly yeah he throws a couple bad shots and then it's all over Andy would converting on an awesome birdie with kind of an awkward putt. Yep. Real close, but... Ian actually being the closest one parked there, so uh, he may have had the most technical shot, but he sure, you know, that backhand rock certainly worked for him. That's a really tough backhand shot. And I think that, in my opinion, Ian would throw the forehand line on this hole, but he's had a couple bad forehands today. He might be a little scared of it. All right, headed into hole eight, 279 feet, par three. This one pans way to the left. You'll see um, the fairway that the drone is following is very narrow and kind of pans in that direction, but reality-wise, you actually kind of want to cut the corner here. You'll see these forehand players probably trying to throw a any forehand to cut through that gap to see if they can get up there for their two look. Kind of a poke and pray hole if you're throwing that inside line. There's also a really wide, really high hyzer line, but uh, you're still just... Oh, Brendan's taking the wide line here, and you're still just kind of praying here. I think the scramble is easier if you take this wide line, mm -hmm. but getting to the basket is easier if you take the inside line. And he actually threaded that needle. It's very tight there, but he actually got up to basket height there. Yeah, this was a bounty hole for leagues at this course to get a two. So mm -hmm. then that's how we know that it's a very, very tough two where they make like a somewhat of an ace pool, but only for one hole, and it's for a score. Yeah, Marweed unable to successfully cut the corner. Here, Jeff actually pures it, not touching a single tree, and actually overshoots the hole a little bit there. He's going to have a bit of a tester coming back for that too look. Yeah, Jeff almost wanted to hit a tree there, which is kind of insane. Yeah, for sure. It's just Hamilton with the wide hyzer line, he's going to come up a little short, but he's going to have a little bit of a look too. Yep. And we've seen Andy make these putts before. The problem with Andy's putt is it's so high that he has a ceiling here and has to go right at it. Yep. It's not something he's used to doing, but what a run. Yeah, he's very comfortable throwing that thing forever in the air and letting yeah. it come down. Some, some of Andy's putts go 15-plus feet high. Ian kind of putting his up in the air there, kind of making a run just a touch short. Jeff here from outside circle. Oh, Jeff. Just off the top of the basket there. He wanted that one for sure. That's well within Jeff's range. Yep. And Brendan with the closest to the basket. Just inside circle, I'd say, and just off the top. Caught that eight logo at the top of the basket there. And then all four of our players are going to be really disappointed taking a par on this hole. Not that you would go be disappointed taking a par coming into it, 
but to have a look and then be able to take a stroke on the entire card and then indiv- all, all of them individually coming up at the par is just not uh, yeah. you know how you win the state championship but only 10 people 12 people excuse me getting the two on this hole specifically played a little over its par at just plus point eight. Uh, 0.08, excuse me, but um, absolutely, getting in the look here, you definitely want to convert. Heading into hole 9, 188 feet, small little dinker, you're just trying to beat the two guardian trees here uh, and sneak past those ones. You'll see a backhand right hyzer look around the right tree, or um, we've also seen a forehand. If you can sneak past those two trees, you'll have a look. Really pure drive here. He, I like this play the most. I think we're just playing to the right gap and then being having a confident twenty-five foot putt because the putt isn't that difficult. Andy doing the same thing here, just committing to that right gap and trusting his putt, which is, I mean, he's got a deadly putt. Yeah, coming in as tied as the easiest hole on the course for the day. Uh, not too surprising, um, as we see Jeff go with another hawk. He did this in round one as well. And just gets a weird ground action there, leaving himself at circle's edge. I think he got spooked with his hawk yesterday, threading those two trees. Could be. But um, anytime Jeff doesn't commit a more conventional line, uh, he throws that hawk. It's not going to give you an exact finish, but the flight of the disc is going to be extremely consistent and finish straight no matter what. And, and, he, and he absolutely can lace that shot. Right, he's been doing that time. shot for 15 years or however long he's been playing. Yeah. So far we got two for two. Our two longest putts have both been able to convert on the am side there. So we're probably going to get a star frame here, a second one on the card so far. Yeah, doubt Brendan or Andy are going to miss from this close. I don't know. Ziggy made some predictions in round one that didn't happen, so we're hope, hope, hopefully Marweed can convert this one. I don't know. Maybe one of Michigan's best putters from eight feet. Oh, thank goodness he made it. Michigan's highest rated player really known for his putt and this is an eight footer doubt no yeah luckily uh, he, he converts it uh, headed into hole 10 391 feet par 3 uh, the road here that you can see winding on the left side and moving forward is all labeled as OB um, as the hole kind of uh, swings to the right side here Ziggy kind of made the point that a lot of players in the initial rounds weren't really aware of it being OB, not that they landed in it and then didn't take strokes, but they were a little more aggressive in taking their forehand lines to it. And so some people got some really good scores in round one. Uh, looking at the uh, card here in, hold, in round two, only four people able to convert the birdie. I'm not going to spoil out who those people were yet. but I mean, it's got to be Brendan, right, if anyone's going to do this hole? It's, yeah, it's the bomb lefty. It's definitely the guy who has a, a great pure lefty, and he is definitely in circle there. Almost an easy hole for Brendan. Yeah, and I am actually was really shocked to see Marwood here not throwing a fire birdie. I think he's this is his pink destroyer, which he's trying to level out a little farther, and unfortunately he's going to kick one of those last trees, and it's going to keep him dead on that path, and he's going to be in that OB territory. This is also not a firebird from Jeff. Uh, he's going to kiss off a tree into the uh, open fairway. Uh, surprisingly enough, this is what he did in round one as well, where he had a uh, tree kick that put him into the fairway. Not as far up as he wants to be, but he will absolutely have a look from long C2 there. Ian throwing a turnover backhand. Not quite getting it past those line of trees on the right side. He's going to have to take a long putt here in the woods. Right. I think this hole is a little bit straighter than a lot of people give it credit for. I think you should still throw a forehand line if you got it, but I don't think people commit long enough on this hole. Which could be why both uh, Jeff and Marweed were throwing non-firebirds. That would right. definitely make sense. I think both of them Ooh. have the power if they really thump on a firebird, but I think they wanted to choke up for a little more accuracy and play throw a faster disc. Yeah, play the game a little easier for them. Jeff with a great run from there, just a touch low. And the same for Marweed there as he ends up just, just past the basket, but he'll have an easy tap in for his bogue, unfortunately. Ian's a, Ian's a pretty quick tap out person too. He likes to skedaddle and get out of people's ways if it's uh, convenient. Yeah, he likes to check the cameraman as well. Brendan, bro. Oh, just a little. Your hole. A, just a little uh, to the am side there. Didn't quite catch. And like you mentioned earlier, he's just coming back from uh, 
back into the sport. He's taken a kind of a hiatus recently. Yeah, not sure how long he's been gone, but uh, he definitely made the point that he was coming back. Absolutely. And and it's, I'm always happy to see a player rated as high as he is. Almost 1,000 rated. I think 995 to come back into our sport is always a positive thing. Headed into hole 11, the ninth hole in our front nine here because we started on hole 3. Uh, 360 feet par 3. This is the definition of poke and pray, would you say? This is Michigan disc golf at its finest. Uh, if you want an explanation of this hole, ask Reed for Skura. I'm sure he'll have some excellent words about it. He loves his Michigan disc golf. Uh, the drone's kind of taking this really low gap. Um, that's really not a line that you can actually throw. You can't throw something that's going to turn that corner and then stay straight that long. A lot of these players are actually just going to kind of poke it up through the open slots in the uh, little higher up the tree line there and then hope to get through a little bit. Uh, Brendan kind of getting a really, really great shot here. Holy smokes. He's so past that barrier. That's the pro line here. I think that's the best decision to make off the tree. I think it's the most consistent. Because um, when you hit a tree there, you're going to land dead center and have just an easy pitch up. And when you pure it, like he did, you're going to have a look for two. I mean, I mean, Jeff, as we mentioned even, uh, earlier, is such a good prepper. He just like kind of recognized, he had mentioned earlier, that he just wants a good tree kick to give himself a look. And he just, both rounds, he has uh, not gotten the tree kick he wants. And Ian, you can see there, getting a tree just square, kicking him back into the fairway, though. So he'll have a, a look to shoot up from there. Marweed... Peered it yesterday. Yeah, he did. Absolutely peered it. Jared Stoll was there to watch it. Missed his gap this this time. today and uh, is closer to the basket. <laughs> that'll that'll work. So he described his play as not really looking at the fairway and throwing his destroyer as hard as he can on a backhand line and going to find it. And Seems to work. Yeah, I think more people should do that because obviously he's two for two. On the day, this hole, I'm sorry if I misspoke earlier, this is actually the hardest hole on the on the course for the day. Um, played at plus point five, oh, I'm sorry, second hardest, excuse me, uh, plus point five seven. Oh, uh, Brandon. Brandon just nicks that tree there. Um, and there were only two birdies on the day, uh, several scores in the double and triple bogey range. Um, but those two people who birdied it were Andrew Marweed, who we'll see in a second, and Noah Morehouse. Nice shots from all those people. Yeah. Andy's the only one that went two for two, I'm absolutely sure. Yeah, that is uh, absolutely sure. I can check it, but That's I'm, unreal. Yeah. It's... Brennan's going to have a tough comeback here after missing those putts. So he's two in a row after making excellent drives on extremely difficult holes. And it just to miss from just outside is not how you win. He could really be shredding if he had made those putts as well as he is uh, just one stroke back from Marweed as they are both four down, Bennett at three down and Ian close behind at two down for this front nine score. So these guys still all within the mix of each other, still pushing each other. Just a couple mistakes on a couple bogeys from the card in general. Um, but yeah, super excited to see these guys on the back nine. Thanks for our Patreon supporters for continuing to help us uh, just continue to make disc golf coverage and we'll see you guys on the back nine.